I've been let down so many times before. How do I know I can trust God's love? How can I share God's love when I've been hurt so often? Why should that matter to me? These questions and more we'll be exploring in this episode of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden. We're exploring episode number 20, Love You Can Rely On. Welcome to Word Search, a place to search God's Word and a time for God's Word to search us. This is to encourage godly character development that stimulates us to prioritize seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness with the mind that it should inform and transform our prayer and practice. For here at Word Search, we look to find treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of that word for his glory. Coming up on Word Search, we'll be considering carefully where we've been on our journey so far in God's fit body plan before our scripture reading today. And then from our scripture reading, we'll be going into exploring the faithful nature of God's love, how that's expressed in scripture, and also considering carefully the enduring nature of the faithful love before concluding and then what happens next in our journey here on Word Search. Previously on Word Search, we've been exploring a series on God's Fit Body Plan. And what God's Fit Body Plan has been all about is based on a brief overview of Ephesians. We zoomed in on Ephesians chapter 4 and how Jesus has given to the body five key leadership gifts that are there to equip and to build the body so that it can both work and it can grow and mature as God wants it to. As well as those crucial roles and functions that Jesus has given to the body of Christ, we also established that for the body to grow, it's essential that the body focuses on the love of God. And it was very specific that we were focusing on God's kind of love. And that's what's launched our series at the moment in looking at what God's kind of love really is all about. We've already looked at the fact that God's love is perfect as an overview of what God's kind of love is all about. In our last episode, what we considered is about how we can see love from the beginning, considering the creative nature of God's love, the providing nature of God's love, and also the way that God's love will cover even when we sin. That's what we considered in our last episode. For this episode, let's explore together what's going on based on our key scripture taken from Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 19, and chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19 says, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 4 verses 15 to 16 tells us, Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Righteous, wonderful Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for the instruction that you give us as to how we can become all you want us to be. Help us now as we're exploring your kind of love to truly have our hearts in the place where we're receptive to what you're saying to us 
at this time. We want to be people who can not just read words on a screen or read words on paper. We want you to speak to us. And so give us the ears to hear and the heart to receive and the hands to apply that which you want us to for your honour and your glory as we explore your kind of love, your faithful kind of love that we can rely on. For your great name's sake we pray. Let's explore the concept of God's faithful love. In our last episode, one of the things that we concluded with looking at with love from the beginning was how God established marriage and how he established it has given us this wonderful concept of the covenant. And the covenant is a key theme that goes throughout all scripture. When we consider the concept of a covenant, we're not just looking at a contract or an agreement. It's a specific type of agreement that reflects something about the relationship between the parties involved. Usually in a covenant, we're looking at a stronger and a weaker party and the terms that the stronger party agrees to give in support of the weaker one and how those two parties will come together to agree on it and the uh, weaker one can agree or can deny the nature of that agreement but there's something about the connection between the two that isn't an it's not necessarily an oppressive one but it is one that the weaker one can feel supplied for or supported by the stronger and the key concept to look at when we're considering covenant and the covenant kind of love that god expresses is that concept of commitment for example one of the first places that we look at the covenant love of god that faithful love that will hold on despite any circumstance is what happens um, between genesis chapter 6 and chapter 9 where we consider carefully god's communication with noah we're told that noah was found to be a righteous and a just man and god's love for noah god's concern for noah was such that we see god give noah a rescue plan we see god show noah the way that he and his family can be rescued from the oncoming flood that he is about to unleash on an earth that has been violent and wicked so God expresses his covenant to Noah to let them know that there will be good relationship between God and the earth and that the way that God has wiped out the earth will never happen again. God establishes a covenant with Noah and the nature of that covenant reflects God's commitment to the world. First of all, he's said that he will never wipe out the world in the same way as he did previously. And he's even given a sign in the sky uh, to make sure that whenever we see that sign we remember the covenant that god has committed himself to not just for humanity but for the world at large the next fascinating place to look at the covenant though is where god gets a bit more specific so it's no longer with just humanity in the world as a whole it's how he's going to work for the benefit of a still rebellious humanity through a particular lineage so in genesis chapters 12 15 17 and 22 we see this wonderful encounter between god and abraham who would become abraham and we see how god's commitment to this man and his lineage was to be a blessing to the entire world hence the importance of those patriarchs abraham isaac and jacob and the nature of god's commitment is another expression another indication of god's kind of love god's faithful kind of love and why it's crucial to look at god's faithful kind of love is that his commitment will remain even in times where the people that he's making that commitment to will behave in a flawed manner i say flawed uh, to say the least when we see what goes on with abraham and his lies with isaac and his lies with jacob and the whole bunch of issues that we can look at with jacob and his sons there would have been for other people an opportunity to skip out on that particular agreement. But this is something about the nature of God's faithful love, that he will stick with this lineage, he will stick with this family through thick and thin. When I consider the enduring nature of the faithful love of God, I could simply refer to the fact of God's faithfulness with the people of Israel from the time he encountered Abraham, Isaac and Jacob 
throughout the not just the decades or the centuries but throughout the millennia of his ongoing commitment to that nation and to that people what fascinates me though about that covenant kind of love is god's encounter with moses moses as we know uh, the writer of the first five books of the bible the torah his role in depicting who this god is is crucial and moses isn't just writing from a distance perspective moses invites us to see how he has had the privilege and opportunity to know god as close and as personal as you can get and i want us to consider this particular episode in the life of the people of israel here in exodus chapter 34 verses 5 to 7 notice what goes on here with god as he encounters moses the bible says the lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the lord the lord passed before him and proclaimed the lord the lord a god merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness keeping steadfast love for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin but who will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation our god is a covenant keeping god the context of this particular episode is very sad for the people of israel have rebelled against god just as they've been brought out of the land of egypt just as they've been taken into the wilderness to have an encounter with god just as god has approached them and made sure that they were aware of just how holy he is despite all of that the people still turned their back on god and when they didn't see moses coming back from his encounter with god for a while they've rebelled and they've set up a golden calf for themselves god has given moses the opportunity to just carry on by himself and take the people into the promised land but moses knows that it's not by his strength or his might that he's been able to take the people he recognizes the need for god to be in control god uses the opportunity then to have an encounter with moses one that moses requests himself and god uses that to renew the covenant before that renewal takes place we have this tremendous encounter in response to moses's request to have this encounter god reveals as much as he would to any man and this revelation isn't just about moses getting an insight into what he looks like it's more getting an insight into who god is what kind of god we're looking at and here again just as he commits himself again to this rebellious people god establishes how he will keep his word how that's the kind of god he is he is the kind of god who is merciful and gracious he is the kind of god that is abounding in what steadfast love and faithfulness and when we look at that word steadfast love it gives us this intriguing word called hesed and when we look at hesed it can re refer to a number of qualities but those qualities are marked by the similarity of being flowing abundant and overwhelming so in this case when you look at the abounding in steadfast love abounding in hesed it's like multiple and multiple aspects of the character of god a love that will remain even when the circumstances change a love that will remain even when we are faithless he remains faithful that kind of abounding and steadfast love then is something that god wants moses to know is a quality of his that not only moses will see but generations after him will see as well that's a faithful love that's an enduring love that's the kind of love that will withstand all manner of rejection and rebellion then we notice carefully what god says about not only is he merciful and gracious and abounding in that love that love expresses itself through forgiveness the forgiving of iniquity the forgiving of transgression and the forgiving of sin three ways in which we can rebel against god and another series will go into those three different types of rebellion at another stage but it's just fascinating to touch on at this point when we're talking about the faithful nature of god's love 
we're looking at a God that will forgive. We're not looking, however, at a God that is just lenient for the sake of it. We are looking at a righteous and a just God. But it is good to know that this righteous and just God that will visit the iniquity of the fathers of the children to generations afterwards is the same God that to those who turn their hearts to him will find them to be a covenant keeping God. There are so many other areas in scripture that we can point to that reflects on the covenant keeping nature of God. One particular area of great fascination is Psalm 136 where the people themselves know what it is to live under the righteous rule of God and experience his love in the great acts that he has done in defense of his people, in forgiving his people and in restoring his people as the people would chime in with the chorus his love endures forever his mercies endure forever his faithful love his steadfast love this great quality of his love just keeps on going and going and going we see that in psalm 136 and then even as jeremiah later on is bewailing the circumstances his people are in as they are going to find themselves in exile because of their rebellion even in Lamentations, Jeremiah still looks at the faithful love of God, the steadfast love of the Lord that never ceases. And then that expression of rejoicing about how God's mercies are new every morning, such is his faithfulness. That's what we see in Lamentations. And the rest of the scripture, when we consider the Old Testament in particular, is a lineage of God's faithfulness and how he will remain faithful even when man is faithless and how he will still fulfill his plan through the seed that is through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, through that seed promised to them uh, that will come about, through the seed that will come through the Davidic covenant as well, through the seed that will be fulfilled in Jesus. And so when we see Jesus, he himself embodies the love of God. He embodies this faithful love this enduring love that will keep on going even when others remain faithless look at the way that he would restore peter for example after his act of betrayal when he would forsake jesus he would deny jesus on three occasions that's just a glimpse of the faithful restoring love of god that jesus would embody and fulfill so when we talk about how we too can experience that kind of love and more importantly, how we can practice that love. The first point of call that we have is to focus on who God is. Focus on his great track record, his tremendous track record of faithful love through the ages. How he has remained faithful to the people of Israel. He remained faithful when they rebelled. He remained faithful when they were in exile. He remained faithful even when they returned to their land. And there were years in which they were facing opposition from other forces. God's love remained. So when we consider that love, and then when we see that love in Jesus, and we recognize that it's focusing on that love, and seeing that love fulfilled in him, that is the route that we have to be able to express that kind of love ourselves. We may have come from backgrounds where people had hurt us, where people had caused all manner of harm towards us, and we might not think that that kind of love is available. But as we look to God, as we pray to him, and as we focus and meditate on these qualities and characteristics, that's the root that we have, especially when we look at how, like Abraham would give up his son, God himself actually went through with it and sacrificed his only son so that we could have a right relationship with him. And not only does that right relationship bring us into any covenant, it brings us into a new covenant that has been marked in the blood of Jesus. A great covenant, a great agreement where the stronger one, God, takes us and calls us his own. He's our God and we are his people. And so he gives us his love as we focus on him to be able to love as he loves, a faithful love, an enduring love, a committed love that will endure and will last whether people are faithful or faithless. This remarkable love then that we're considering, what can we conclude at this time in the light of what we studied? One of the first things that's worth 
considering in our conclusion is to remind ourselves that God's kind of love is faithful. He remains true. He sticks to his word. He is a covenant keeping God. We see this love in his relationship with the people of Israel. We see this love in his commitment to them to be their God and looking to them to be faithful to him. And despite their faithlessness and despite their flaws, he would still fulfill his plan. Such is the nature of his love. This is the kind of love that we see in God with his people Israel. The people themselves then are able to recount the nature of the love that's been expressed to them when they are able to talk about the mercies that endure forever and the compassion that they've experienced from God. So this kind of love isn't invisible. Uh, this love is experienced in a very visible way in their track record in their time with this God. One of the key things to recall then and to note in conclusion is how Jesus comes to fulfill and embody this kind of love in his treatment of others, in his enduring faith, enduring love with those who would sometimes let him down, disappoint him, fail him. This type of love is expressed in Jesus and that gives us hope that by his spirit and by focusing on him, we too can love as he loves. We can love like this. As ever, when it comes to this kind of love, then our challenge is what can we do to explore this love with others and express it for the glory of God? Here are some prayer points I want us to consider in the light of what we've learnt on this episode. First of all, let's praise God for his faithful love. Thank God for this love that endures. We really should express our gratitude to God that this is the kind of love he expresses. Let's go on then to ask God for grace to display this faithful love to others. We don't just want to be recipients of this love. We want others to also be able to experience it through us. And so in the same manner, let's seek God for those chances to encourage others to experience this love likewise. So let's praise God for his faithful love. Thank God for the love that endures. Ask God for the grace to display it. Seek God for chances to encourage others. And finally, let's celebrate God that this love will be enjoyed for eternity. Next time on Word Search, we'll be moving on to episode 21, Jesus' Love That Serves You Right. We look forward to you joining us for that episode to see what that's all about. In the meantime, please remember to like this video and share it with your friends and loved ones. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, turning that notification bell on so that you can be informed of future episodes of Word Search. This is a production of Zion Awake Ministries. You can find out more about ZAM on the contact details in the description below. Please get in touch with us with any questions you might have about the episode or points that you want to share. Also consider supporting the ministry as every contribution you make really does make a difference and is greatly appreciated. My name's Christopher Dryden. Thank you so much for joining us because here on Word Search, we want to find treasure in God's Word so that we can be hearers and doers of that Word for His glory. Until next time on Word Search, God richly bless you as you live out that love you can rely on. Shalom.